This is the part of the show where I get to look at growing figs in cold climates. And today, you'll hear a chat that I had over the weekend with Ross Raddy. Ross is a really inspiring 27-year-old backyard orchardist in the Philadelphia area, passionate about growing his own fruit and vegetables. Ross talks about what to do with fig trees at this time of year in cold climates, just as they start to come out of dormancy. I recommend you check out Ross's videos on YouTube. They're great. And you'll find him on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where his handle is at Ross Raddy, R-O-S-S-R-A-D-D-I. Now, here's my chat with Ross. Hi, Ross. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me to talk about figs today. Oh, hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me again. It's really nice being on the show of yours. I really love being on the radio. It's just such a nice thing that you guys are doing. You and your daughter, Emma, are doing a great job. I just love all the inspiration that you guys are giving people, especially on figs. Well, thanks. We're, we're having lots of fun with it. It's nice to hear that. Thank you. I have to ask you about the fig shuffle because I know that every year I think about taking my figs out and some years I've brought them out early and then we get a a cold snap and I have to rush them back into the garage before it gets too cold and my neighbors must think I'm crazy because I, I'm moving these plants back and forth and I noticed on your blog you were talking about the fig shuffle so tell me about what the fig shuffle means to you. <laughs> well uh, the neighbors thinking you're crazy is probably you doing it right. But um, this fig shuffle is essentially, like you said, moving the pots around, moving the fig trees from wherever they're being protected, whether that's in your garage, maybe you have a root cellar, maybe you even have a greenhouse, and then you move them out into the sun, into warmer conditions, and the, the trees really heat up. And because they're getting that access to the heat, the metabolisms of the trees really start to get going, and they... They wake up, they put out leaves, and the growth is actually really strong depending on the amount of heat you can give them. Definitely suggest putting them in an area where there's a lot of thermal mass, maybe against your house, mm -hmm. on the patio, somewhere where you can really get that heat. And then if there's a frost that's going to come in, which you were also mentioning, you got to get them out of that way of the frost. Keep them above 32 degrees. Also, definitely pay attention to the frost warnings on your weather forecast. And I would suggest if you don't want to have to maybe do the fig shuffle, you can maybe get away with it if you have them maybe in a microclimate in your yard that's perhaps a bit better, Right. maybe on higher ground. Um, also, you can get some plastic. Uh, you can put some plastic over them, um, really cover the leaves if there is some leaves, and hopefully if the temperatures are not too low, I would say maybe around maybe 25 to 28 degrees Fahrenheit to be safe. That's a really iffy temperature. But mm -hmm. if that frost comes in, at least the plastic is going to keep them protected. I also have friends that spray them before mm. they go to bed. They'll get their hose and they'll spray all their trees. It's what a lot of orchardists actually do in different crops. They'll either use wind tunnels and they have these turbines in their orchard and they blow tons of wind on the plants and that really keeps that frost at bay or they will they will spray them all with water and okay. i think those are two really good methods otherwise you're going to be one of them crazy people that's shuffling <laughs> them back and forth <laughs> okay well so i know where you are in philadelphia area you're ahead of us it's it's warmer there than here in toronto where are your figs mm -hmm. at right now right now i'm seeing about four or five leaves on a lot of the trees that were dormant about a month ago. And we've tried to wake them up with the fig shuffle. We put them out, a lot of them on the patio, about April 1st. And here in my climate, the last frost is May 1st. So we put them out about a month early. I mm -hmm. would say 15 to 30 days is pretty, pretty safe. But again, you're pushing it. If you have a lot of pots, you don't have a good back, they're really heavy, it may not be something you want to do. But here in my climate, we've gotten away with this year. It's just been a phenomenal April. I cannot believe uh, all the stone fruits in the ground, as an example, woke up really early. They bloomed really early. And I thought, oh, no, we're going to get this frost that's going to come in, and I'm going to have to protect everything. But even tonight, it's uh, it's actually really good, and we're almost at May 1st now. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, I don't know when this is going to air, but... Um, we are basically at this point away from all the frost. And like I said, 
three to five leaves on all the figs that were dormant. We have some in the pa- in the greenhouse that we've taken out of the greenhouse just this past weekend. We put them on the patio, adjusted them very slowly to the sun. Even though they're in the greenhouse and it's outside, that plastic is reducing that UV rays. So you have to really be careful, and you don't want to throw them in the full sun too soon. Right. So we've adjusted them, put them on the patio. And now they're, they're actually some of those that have been in the greenhouse. We woke those up sometime around mid-March. So they've mm-hmm. been awake for a long time. And with the help of a heater in the greenhouse I turn on at night, keep those temperatures above 60. The trees are looking at, um, I would say, somewhere around eight or nine leaves per branch. So we're really far ahead of the season. I have actually main crop that's forming. I have a number of Braba that should be ripe maybe in about a month and a half. Wow. And I'm looking at main crop here from the greenhouse trees. I would say August 1st, even for the very late varieties that I'm, I'm growing, which is exceptional. Uh, that's the goal every year. And I really figured out the greenhouse. You've got to tweak the numbers in there, really get things to the perfect condition for the optimal growth. Cause you got to also get in there and water. You don't want to make things too hot or too dry. So I really made the numbers work out super well, and uh, everything is just really far ahead. Wow. So that sounds fantastic. You'll be having a, a good early fig harvest. And meanwhile, I was driving through snow yesterday to go somewhere, so I have to say I'm pretty envious. <laughs> I'm envious, too. This is never going to happen again. Wow. I don't, I don't know. This is a really incredible April we've had. So I also want to get you to share just some of your top springtime tips as people are, are getting their figs ready for the season and they're coming out of dormancy. What are some of the top tips you share with people? You got it, Stephen. So the biggest tip is heat. If you don't get these trees out in a warm place, even your in-ground trees, say you live in a, in a, a warm place, you live in a cold place and you have some in-ground trees, move away that mulch. Get the ground really warm. Think of these things as if they are tropical and they really need that heat because most fig trees, they will grow some roots at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, but really until it gets to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the root zone, we're talking about the temperature at the root zone, Mm -hmm. they don't really do a whole lot. So getting them that extra heat is really the best fertilizer. Mm. And it's not really a fertilizer, but that's what I recommend to everybody. It's just warm things up. And I know that your climate can only give you so much, but you can really take advantage of that with different aspects of your yard. And, and the other things I would suggest is um, definitely give them some fertilizer first thing in the spring. Okay. That extra, for, that extra food's really going to get them to the form those new leaves, those new branches. And that new growth is really, really important because the, the clock is ticking. For people that are like you and I who live in shorter season climates. I only have six months of frost-free days. I'm sure yours is even lower. Mm-hmm. So to get a fig tree to fruit in six months is quite a challenge. So what you need to do is feed them to get that new growth. And then sometime around June in my area, or even July, maybe in your area, you have to think about pinching. So pinching is going to remove that apical bud, induce those fruits, really tell the tree to say, hey, stop growing and let's put out some fruit. And what you need to do in the meantime is to focus on that growth. It's all leading up to June. It's all leading up to July because all that is going to really increase that productivity and inevitably your happiness. (laughs) Mm. So the other big tip is just water, and that's it. Okay. So heat, feed, pinch, and water then are some of the top tips. Those are the top tips for sure. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Ross. That. Those are great tips. I wish you a good fig harvest this season. Okay, Stephen. Thank you so much for having me, and good luck. I hope to see you guys uh, again soon. Maybe you should come down here and taste some figs in August. (laughs) I'd love that. That was a chat that I had with Ross Raddy, who's a fig expert in the Philadelphia area, and Ross was sharing his tips for fig trees at this time of year as they're starting to come out of dormancy. You can check out Ross's videos on YouTube. Just look for his name, Ross Raddy, R-A-D-D-I, and you'll find him on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the handle at Ross Raddy. And I should mention, too, that Ross joined us in a previous episode 
with lots of tips on figs and backyard fruit. And if you're interested in that, go to stephenbiggs.ca, past 